I've been paying a lot of attention for the last year, very intentionally in my own work, a lot of attention to the creative process, partly because I've been trying to teach it. And in the process of teaching it, well, then you want to do it and you sort of should do it. It takes a lot of time and energy to be creative and to let that creative process kind of run its course. I always kind of scare my students by saying, whatever you make in this class will outlive you by several hundred thousand years. You know, they're like, what? What are you talking about? Like, yep, you will make things that are around a lot longer than you are. Maybe not in the form that you make them in, but the material itself. It's just that idea of truth just overlapping in the many ways that, that it presents itself, whether it's the photographic image, art, literature, history. You know, I think that interdisciplinary approach to understanding you know, a broader truth uh, is sort of the how I approach every project. I've always been on the margins of a lot of different media. You could call it interdisciplinary or you could call it anti-disciplinary or non-disciplinary. I don't exactly know where this is going and that's kind of where I like to be um, with an art project. It's my sort of favorite stage of the process when I'm just exploring materials. Creativity is found in constraints. So the analogy I use is, if I gave you the whole beach to make a sandcastle, you could probably spend a week trying to figure out where you're gonna put it. But if I said here, in this sandbox, is where you're going to make whatever castle it is with these tools. It's like, all right, well, we can go up, we can go to the edges. So the constraints can push creativity. When you're drawing, you have the final say. When you're painting, you have the final say. Um, so there's this element of accident or whim or uh, lack of control that's kind of magical about the process, <laughs> right? And so, you know, you put that glaze on and, oh, it didn't come out exactly the way you wanted it. So therefore you have to make another piece, right? Like the kiln has the final say. The theme of man-made structures juxtaposed with natural structure is something that I keep coming back to in my work. Everything kind of sort of spirals back around to that. Because it's one of those things where I don't know until I see it, but when I see it, I know. Um, yeah, I guess I just sort of like paint with light as I go along. And I mean, I tend to lean to the vessel because that's just what my own work is. Students love to make things that they understand what it is. You know, so the more sculptural, ironically, the more uncomfortable they often are with it. Failing is really huge in creating. Even last week I told students that, okay, so the first drawing you make, I hope it is not so great. In the second drawing, maybe it's better, but I'm anticipating 25% success rate, <laughs> but I'm hoping for 150% trying. But it's really about getting up, trying again, thinking about the process, what happened, what didn't happen, what, what did I intend to do, what was my intention, and then did I make it, and what could I do to change to get closer to my intention? My goal as an educator is to really set a tone that it's better to take a big creative risk and maybe end up with a final product that is rough around the edges or doesn't fully cohere. It's better to do that uh, than to just kind of have a prefab notion that you are executing, right? And it's always better to work through your own ideas, however messy they might be, than to regurgitate the ideas of others. So what I'm really looking for is growth. I'm trying to see, you know, where they were, and where they want to go and where they ultimately end up. In a culture where we are taught to consume and consume quickly, um, we can overlook many nuances in photography and in images. Um, so part of what I like to teach is, you know, this close looking at images. Um, a slower approach to making photos. Um, and I don't think that's specific to photography. It's really neat to see 
students spread their wings throughout the term and gain confidence not only with the technical side of things, but with their own ability to synthesize ideas together. I know for ninth graders, they're like, um, they're really ambitious. So when I show them the seriousness of art, they it's sort of just enough to hook them. But then uh, we start talking about um, complementary colors, uh, abstraction, composition, and I have them make their own abstract art. And for the first week, I let them work mostly experimentally. And for a lot of students who are sort of used to the rigor and structure of this type of learning, where one week it builds off of the other, um, they find themselves sort of for the first time in a long time, like given free reign to express and experiment. I think students need to learn skills in order to communicate what it is they want to say. They're bearing part of their soul. It is important, but I try to separate the art from the person. It's like, this is one thing you're going to make in this moment, and I hope you make many things in many moments, and that you'll get closer to what it is we're trying to do. I think for them, making art is such a treat, and they have so much fun, and they get so excited about their ideas. You know, I can't help but but be inspired by them. And I think that the kids have a lot to learn from the teachers, but I think the teachers have a lot to learn from the kids.